Hi, I'm One to Free Happily. So I started doing subtitles about eight months ago when I got into Vocaloid because a lot of Vocaloid music videos have really nice subtitles. I need to drink water. <sighs> so someone asked me, can you go through your process on making effects like you did to help in saddest animation? I'd like to learn as I'm making my own. Hello. You scared the shit out of me, dog. Oh, you are awful. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Good girl. On making effects like you did to help in status animations, I'd like to learn as I'm making my own. The first step is to get in touch with the person that made the video. I usually do that through their business email. This is an important step because YouTube no longer lets you community upload subtitles. Don't spend hours making subtitles and then go to send them and they don't respond or they don't want to put them up. Just waste of time. Uh, I did do it with Hog Hunt, so hypocritical right out of the gates here. And I was super lucky that Sadis was down to follow that process through. If she hadn't been, I just would not have been able to put my subtitles up and I would have wasted a good four hours. I assume you've already chosen a video for this. I would recommend going for ones that have like black bars, but if not, that's okay. Download an MP4 of the video. And if there are already subtitles on the video, that would be a good place to start. And you can go to a website called Downsub where you can pull those down and grab them as an SRT file. Basically, you pull up an Aegis sub thing, load in your video, load in your SRT, and then you have basically the subtitles that were already there. There's a few things you'll need to do this particular process. There's an amazing converter that's up on GitHub somewhere by Arcus Maximus, which actually converts Aegisub files to YouTube files. And they have a document on what you can and can't do with this converter. You can't just make an amazing thing in Aegisub, put it into YouTube and, and it'll all work out. That's not how it works. I would also recommend installing Fiddler while you're there. They have an instruction on how you're supposed to do that because you need to test the subtitles as well because it doesn't look the same on Aegisub as it does on YouTube. Once you have all that set up, you can start working. Step one is to fix any grammar issues in the original subtitles, anything that you want to change. Now, something I will specify is the difference between subtitles and CC. CC meaning closed captions. They are not the same thing. Subtitles is for people that have hearing and they're usually for translations. CC is for people that don't have hearing and the main difference you'll see is that CC has stuff in square brackets that say like thud or air rushing. So depending on what you want to make, that's something to consider. Once you have all that set up, you could actually start working. I've changed the colors of Aegis up a little so that this is black. I would probably spend some more time in making this whole thing like a dark mode because you'll be spending literally hours looking at the same thing. That's just a quality of life thing. It's also good to learn some of the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, do I know the keyboard shortcuts off the top of my head? Probably not. <laughs> I'll give you a rundown of the interface. You have a bunch of tools and stuff here that I don't use. In this box here you have the actual text of the subtitle and in the curly brackets you have the code which is tags. This backward slash means that this is all a tag. And on Aegisub's website, you have a huge list of tags. On the Converter website, you have the list of tags that you can use. So go there for the information. This box here is your video. Scroll up and down to zoom it in and out. So when you want to go frame by frame, use the arrow keys left and right to just switch through. And then you can use this information to tell you how far away you are from the start and the end of the subtitle. That's helpful when you want to do fades, so you can time in the fades. Reading through that will often give you a good idea of what you can and can't do. Up here is your spectrogram, which is like a, a visualization of all the audio. If you're trying to load up the subtitles to the video, go to this. If not, the audio go here. When you make a change here, you have to click this tick button to apply it to the subtitle. Down here are a list of all of your subtitles. You'll see I repeat a lot of these because there'll be changes throughout that I need to make a duplicate of the subtitle for. This red or not thing is CPS or characters per second. When it's really red, it means that the person doesn't have enough time to read. A lot of these have massive red things because these are not meant to be red. In fact, they're overlapping. When you have a subtitle here, you can double click to stick it anywhere on the screen. That's another thing. So when you're on YouTube and you hover over the video, the play bar comes up and the subtitles shift upwards. In this situation, I would want them to shift upwards so people can still read them. Um, but in other, I don't think there's any in here, but sometimes when you have a subtitle in the middle of the screen, you don't want it to move when your cursor comes up. If you set the formatting to like five, 
and lock it, the anchor point to the middle and then put it in the same position, it won't move. Another thing down here that you see is style. So if we go to the styles manager, we have a bunch of different options here. I leave default as it is. All of these are set to 20 right now, but as I'm working, they're up to 60, so they're not like puny, puny little subtitles down here. These ones, basically they're like presets. Uh, I'd leave the default one though, that's important for later. The way the sizing works is very complicated and I'm not going to be able to explain it well. Go and read it on the YouTube converter site. But basically leave the default way you, as you found it and then go make another one, call it something like font size, change the font size in here and then every time you want to make a new preset copy this one with this and work off that. In terms of making effects, that's up to you how you want to do that because it's like a stylistic decision. That's kind of where the, the finesse or the art of it, if I dare say, comes comes into it. If the video is good, I match what's on the screen. If the video is not so interesting, you might have a difficult time making it interesting. Saddest is stunning and has lots of really nice little transitions hidden in here that I could manipulate to create some interesting effects. Make sure you test with Fiddler. That process will probably take as long as making the subtitles in the first place, so be prepared to spend a lot of time doing that. If you see this colour graph, two different things will happen to subtitles depending on which side of the graph they, the colour is. If it's below this middle line, it's fine, there's usually no issues. If it's above this middle line, Android devices will add another subtitle on top, which is lighter, making the whole subtitle like a grey instead of a black, because Android YouTube tends to delete dark subtitles, and so the converter compensates for this by adding another one on top. But, for example, if your subtitle was sitting in the middle of the screen, and it was black, and then you put it on an Android-based device, like Google Chrome as well, you'll not see it properly because it'll be like grey. That happened to me and I that was a learning experience on the Dre SMP like shit posts that Sadus did. It doesn't play properly on Google Chrome and I should have tested that. So test it both in Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome if you can using Fiddler. Once you get to testing in Fiddler you'll notice that your font size on YouTube will be way too small or way too big. Basically change it here and then that will have a knock-on effect for everything else. But the trick is you've got to change it opposite to how you expect. Um, if you want the, f the font to be bigger on YouTube, you have to make it smaller in here. I know that doesn't really make sense, but trust me, the reasons for that are on the converter's site. I just figured that's the easiest way for me to do it. It means I don't have to go through and change everything over and over. You can just save your Aegisub thing, and it is .ass as an extension. Once you do that, you can drag it in here, and then you'll be given these options to change. On the converters page, there's sort of a side-by-side -side image of what subtitles look like in Aegisub and what they'll look like in YouTube. You use that to guide what you want to do. It's good to decide these things early so you don't have to run around and try and change them all later. When you make these changes, especially around the, the shadow and the outline, it might not convert properly, so make sure you go in here and check and then hit convert instead of auto convert. Then you can take the outcome, which is a .ytt file, and put that into Fiddler and test it there. There's a lot of back and forth, but you'll find that you get pretty quick with the process. I can change out my file to test it in probably about 30 seconds, whereas I used to take about a minute and a half. You'll find that you'll get faster with all of this. Once you do that, just smack the .ytt file into an email, send it off to the person you've organized with. Another thing, it's important to credit yourself because I wouldn't have any recognition otherwise. YouTube used to automatically give credit to people that did subtitles, not anymore. So make sure you put in the credit within the subtitles, probably not at the start, preferably at the end. People tend to turn on the subtitles halfway through the video and miss the credit, I know, because a lot of people thought that YouTube gods have gifted saddest videos with subtitles. Yeah, that's basically the whole process a good thing to do is to try looking at subtitles that other people have done, have a look at what can be done with them. Again, the Vocaloid community has some really amazing ones. You're always welcome to reach out to me on Reddit, it's probably where I'll see you. If you flick me a direct message on there or Twitter, you can uh, send me a message there as well. And if you have any issues or questions or problems, then let me know there. I'm probably going to set up my website for fancy subtitle commissions at some point, but I imagine it'll be pretty slow going because a lot of people don't know or aren't aware that this is a thing. 
thing you can do. YouTube is constantly updating and a lot of the information can become outdated really quickly so it's very important to test, test, test um, to make sure everything's working. I hope that you guys have fun with this sort of stuff. You can have a lot of fun with these subtitles especially when it's a more laid-back video like Dre SMP. I had a lot of fun with those um, even if they did break in the end. <laughs> Happy subtitling, I guess. <laughs> For all the people that came all the way to my channel to say thank you, thank you. Uh, it really means a lot. Pretty much it. I don't know. <laughs> thank you for watching this very long video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, night, evening, whatever, and goodbye.